turn in your King James Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 12. We're going through the book of 2 Samuel right now in our um, nightly devotions as a family. And I saw a verse last night, two verses actually, that I thought were rather telling. It brought to mind one of my studies I did in the past. Let's read here, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. Here you have the thing of uh, David gets caught for killing Uriah the Hittite and taking Bathsheba to be his wife. And um, Nathan comes and he is confronting David and judging him. But look what he says here, verse 9. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, fair, now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me. Nathan speaking for the Lord. Thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Huh. Up here in verse 9 it says, despise the commandment of the Lord. Down here it says, uh, despised me. You think that God actually equates this book with himself? Mm -hmm. Let me show you the proof. John chapter 14. Go to the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. For those who are newly saved. New Testament and then the book of John. Chapter 14 and verse 23. And 24. The Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Huh. Lines up perfectly. If you despise the commandments, if you despise the word of God, then you don't really love the Lord. How important is this book in your life? King James Bible. Better be very important if you speak English. If you speak another language, then find the equivalent of a Receptus type Bible, Textus Receptus type Bible in your language. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13. Many places in the scriptures, the number 13 is given kind of as a cursed number. Um, and you'll see why I picked Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13, here in this King James Bible. It says here, Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Satan came into the churches back in the late 1800s, and he introduced something called naturalistic textual criticism. Um, two of the big champions of it were Brooke, uh, Fenton John Anthony Hort and Brooke Foss Westcott two lost professors over in England, one at Cambridge, one at Oxford. And they came out with this whole thing saying that this is just a book. It's not supernatural, so we should update it. And they said, oh, we'll update a few words here and there and just kind of have a committee to look and see if we should update a few words that are kind of passed out of common usage and whatever else. And what they did is they actually introduced a text, a Greek text from the Vatican that totally changed it. And then they came out with a new version called the Revised Version of 1881. I have one here in my collection. I'm not going to show it right now. I'm not even sure where the thing is right now. It's here somewhere. But I've shown it in other videos. I've shown it in other studies. And then they brought it over to America, called it the American Standard Version. And then they started to really open up the floodgates. And then the preachers all started to say a better translation would be. A better translation would be. You need the Greek and the Hebrew. You need This isn't good enough for you. And they began to despise the word. You see? They despise the commandments of the Lord, and yet they claim to love Jesus. I hate the King James Bible that founded this great nation here in America, but I love Jesus. Um, Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. Has America despised this book in the last 100 years? Yes, it has. You see, the devil did a masterful move. He said that this King James Bible is too archaic. It's too hard for people to understand. We can't possibly witness to the lost world with an archaic Elizabethan English Bible. 
Funny, it worked for hundreds of years, and then all of a sudden it stopped working. Kind of a weird thing. But uh, we have to come out with the new Bible versions that are easier for people to understand, that our children can read and they won't be confused. Children in the past read them, they weren't confused. But we have to come out with them. Okay, what fruit did it bear? Did America get better or worse throughout the 20th century? Got worse. Scientific fact. It's not my opinion. The greatest history of bloodshed ever in, from the beginning of time until now. More people died in the 20th century than at any other time in history. Did taking away this book mean something about that? Or was that part of it, I guess I should say? Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. But you see, thankfully, we still have the book. Those of us that actually read and believe this King James Bible. Um, but there are people out there that say, well, I, uh, I believe in Jesus and I love Jesus very much. But I sure hate that King James Bible. We don't want it in here. Don't bring it in here. They're liars. They despise the book. Then they despise Jesus Christ. It's just that simple. So I would recommend studying this issue about the Bible versions. The Bible version issue, I should say. Um, I've done numerous videos on it. Other men have done videos on it. Um, and you get these slick devils like James White and some of these others, D.A. Carson and a lot of these guys, and they just continue to spew out their satanic filth. Well, the King James Bible is a good translation, but it's not perfect. No translation is inspired. Only the original autographs are inspired. And the Greek and the Hebrew, we all must study Greek and Hebrew. Wait, I thought you said that uh, this is too hard to understand. Then why should I go back to this? That's easier to understand? I mean, this is a this is this is an archaic. <laughs> Think about it. God used 54 of the greatest translators, greatest scholars ever over a seven year period from 1604 to 1611 to give us this blessed book right here. And it's been tried and tested and preached through country after country, missionaries taking it all over the world, been preached and how many hundreds of millions of people gotten saved down through the centuries with this book? I don't even know. Lots. What has this done? So, just wanted to make a quick video about this. Put that thing back on the shelf there so it can't hurt anybody. <laughs> uh, you get into the Greek and Hebrew thing, it leads to knowledge puffeth up. But charity edifieth. All right. So uh, please do study about the Bible version issue. It's very important. And um, try out this King James Bible. It's worked for hundreds of years for a lot of people. And it's changed the lives of more people than I can even count. And it's changed my life. The new versions that I grew up with, they didn't help me. They made me fall away from the Lord. So that is going to be it. Please think on these things. Thank you for watching.